Welcome to the Sanity Project podcast, the place for internet technology professionals whose work-life balance plan has imploded. We are here to provide solutions that will help the IT pro live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here's your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, this is Joanne Victoria with another edition of the Sanity Project podcast, the place for internet professionals whose work-life balance plan has imploded. We are here to provide solutions that will help the IT pro live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Our guest today is Dr. Tatiana H. Irvin. Dr. Tatiana H. Irvin is a natural energy intuitive and has been serving her clients in private practice for over 20 years, utilizing metaphysical coaching techniques and energy balancing tools. Her website is drtatianairvin.com, and I'm going to spell that for you because sometimes people just put the entire word doctor. It's D-R. T-A-T-I-A-N-A Irvin, I-R-V-I-N dot com, and it will definitely be in the show notes. Through Tatiana's fine-tuned intuitive coaching sessions, coupled with supported states of expanded personal awareness, each client is supported to grow in consciousness, balance, and clarity of genuine purpose. Dr. Irvin assists clients to access their emotional intelligence, their energy, leadership awareness, and recognize their own intuition and frequency of energy in their bodies, homes, and businesses. Dr. Irvin empowers her clients to make tremendous strides towards intentional manifestation. Dr. Irvin works with business leaders in both corporate businesses and startups to provide clients with essential feedback via energy awareness assessment tools, content-rich integrated leadership presentations and intimate breakout sessions, all helping to direct each client to their most purposeful and sustainable contribution. Tatiana holds a master's degree in metaphysical science, energy leadership from IPEC, medical intuitive certification, and various supporting certificates in energy awareness modalities, and has a PhD in philosophy specializing in holistic life coaching. Tatiana is a number one best-selling author of The Reluctant Intuitive, Motivational Public Speaker, Teacher of Energy Leadership Workshops, a Certified Permaculturist, and Supporter of Intentional Self-Sustaining Communities. Tatiana also serves as a Global Peace Ambassador for the Universal Peace Federation, working directly with the United Nations. Tatiana firmly ascribes to the power of collaborative contribution. Welcome, Tatiana. And I hope I didn't chop that up too much. Oh, thank you so much. That was a mouthful, Joanne. I know. (laughs) But you deserve it. You've worked for it. (laughs) We might have to find, you know, gallant ways of abbreviating that just to spare you in the future. But thank you for that wonderful introduction. I think in the future, all I have to do is say Tatiana is here and they will know. Boom. (laughs) Just like that. Thank you. Well, the, the, our, our audience is made up of IT professionals, and they run the gamut from employees, contractors, up to directors, VPs, and above. How can you help them today in your world of emotional intelligence and intuition with tips and strategies and tools that they can apply in their work and home life? Well, thank you for asking that. I think that when we take the the character of those that are big mind people, they're big cerebral people, they can, they can take abstracts and put them together and weave them in a formulaic way that solves big world problems in energy and in, you know, software development and computing, we need to recognize that it isn't always in their best interest to stay consistently in that mind field place. And so having worked with those that um, are, again, you know, big thinking um, individuals that come to me as clients, we always want to make sure that they're balancing the energy in their body. So those big mind people will come into session for me and they'll end up um, having their hands all over their heads. You know, they'll be grabbing them, they'll be prone to migraines and headaches. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's other anomalous things going on with their body. So the first thing that I want to remind our listener is um, because of the way that you contribute, because of the way that your gifts and your, your skill sets 
um, are playing out in service to the world, we need to make sure that the integratedness of your whole being, of your physical body, of your downtime, um, the, the emotional state of your other energy, um, you know, related organ systems, your digestion, um, getting your feet rubbed, just being integrated is something that we need to actually strive towards and isn't always automatic because their core competencies have a tendency to be, you know, north of heart chakra, if that makes sense. Well, that makes total sense. I think most of the people in the IT pro field on any level, most of them, you know, I will make that statement and take it upon myself, are mostly in their left brain, mm -hmm. and they stay there a lot. Mm -hmm. And it can be exhausting. And they need to access, you know, across the hemisphere. And I'm sure with your work, you do this somehow. They need to access that right brain and then the heart as well, and then bring that all together. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think that, that recognizing wholeness, which I think all of us are actually maybe silently striving for, we may not know that that's the word, but wholeness is experiencing enough of a dance and a play between left and right brain. But also, if we are running from a concept of um, energy awareness and chakra systems, you know, we have these energy centers throughout our body that can be viewed and, and sensed with instrumentation and curly and photography to know that we need to be making sure we're not excessively misdistributing our energies only up into the mind, for instance. We really need to have good digestion and to have a good libido and to, to feel a lot of blood flow in our legs and to be taking deep breaths throughout all those, you know, those, you know, challenging business, uh, you know, meetings that will chop up our day and, and make us hold our bladders and hold our breath. We can sometimes get really unconscious of our bodies. And so a lot of the work that I do is just allowing my clients to be human and return to some of that wholeness and through that awareness, they come back into their into their core competency and their work environment so much more present and, and well managed. Well, the breath seems to be uh, a string through most of my interviews with people, and I've interviewed different types of people: stress, health, nutrition, family, money, communication, taxes, and breathing seems to be. I know we all do it, but not many people realize the benefits of proper or expanded breathing to align, as you're saying, all of the chakras and opening up the heart and the lungs and the brain, both sides, etc. So how do you incorporate breathing with your clients? Well, when we have the intimate setting of being in session or working with Skype, I also have the additional benefit of having them face to face and observe their posture and observe their breath. But in the interest of working with your audience, I would ask that, that those that are listening to be self-reflective. What is their posture when they are holding position on a day-to-day -day basis, especially while they're you know, in the field, while they're in the office, while they're in those conferences? Very often the way we sit in a seat immediately is restrictive of getting uh, oxygen into lower lung and taking big chested breaths. Uh, sometimes we realize that the tension of the room immediately restricts our breath and we find ourselves hinged uh, sitting on the right side of our body or the left side of our body and clenching our fists and don't even realize because we're just not conscious of our body language. So I would ask the listener, examine as they're even listening to this, you know, to this recording, to this podcast, what is your body posture right now? What have you acclimated towards that might be a default that isn't serving you? And then, and then go a little bit deeper and witness your breath. When we are not getting a full breath, number one, the biggest message we're sending the cellular intelligence of our body is we haven't really fully claimed our life. We're almost in a pause mode of not quite wanting to claim it because the breath of life is the first thing that an infant does when they come into the world. It's claiming that new life that is just you know, reached its, its, its apex moment of, of awareness in. And so we need to be able to claim that breath, move that oxygen, therefore the vascular flow through the body. And when we don't, we know that there's a myriad of symptomology that happens um, that we may be taking for granted and assume that it's, you know, due to some other causality. But in truth, it all started with the breath. So that's always a first place to go. So how do you help people access, if that's a term I'll use for today, their intuition using one of the tools, one of the ingredients uh, of the breath. 
First and foremost, uh, we're all told meditation, quiet time, solitude is important. I am not going to be any different coming from an area of expertise and tell you that that's not equally necessary. The breath requires consciousness. So if we can take a moment every single morning before we get out of bed, before we even open our eyes, I always encourage every single one of my clients, regardless of where they are professionally or in what arena, be aware of how you feel the moment you wake up. It may be the most natural state that you can even access since you were a young, young child. And feel the ease of your musculature, feel you know the weight of your body against the covers, and then be aware of how natural your breath is when you're not being unduly impacted or influenced by external factors. And just feel the ease of that and then intend what emotional state you want to be in for the rest of the day by co-creating with the universe and state um, three things that you're grateful for that are going to hold the same emotional quality of energy that really puts you in your best space. If you love feeling like things are going your way, go into that emotional state and create, you know, uh, some gratitude ideas around that concept. If you're feeling really affectionate towards your partner, gear your energy around that kind of gratitude and how that makes it feel in your body. But that is the first place I start with my clients is when we are coming out of that sleep state, we are really in the most natural and organic state of relaxation to monitor the breath and then intend to hold that state throughout the day by starting with that gratitude and that focus. Well, we're talking about intuition, uh, emotional intelligence, energy leadership. These are terms that are apparently accepted in mainstream business, but how can someone who wants to utilize these tools that I just mentioned that you support into an arena that doesn't quite accept it? How can they be, quote unquote, emotionally intelligent, intuitive, or have energy in their leadership of their team, of themselves, of the group that they might be uh, moderating? Great question, and I would even challenge the question, if you'll forgive me, Joanne, just a little bit, because there's such a demand, thank you, there's been such a demand in corporate, um, middle management on up, and I think that it's finally starting to trickle down. I mean, we have things like, you know, energy leadership that's been developed in many different coaching schools and arenas that's geared specifically towards big business and middle business, uh, conscious capitalism, which is all about bringing mindfulness and, and a sense of fairness and wholeness into the business arena. So some of the tools that I use, there's a wonderful assessment tool that when I come in and I start working with any corporate or executive team, um, I, I ask that all of the participants that are part of that coaching uh, for the day or for whatever the term happens to be, take this assessment tool and it asks a battery of questions that's far deeper than most assessments that anyone's done in the past that may qualify maybe perhaps like a Myers-Briggs or a personality profile. And it actually has some negatively key questions that allow uh, the, the coach that is doing the debrief and the assessment to determine how the individual taking the assessment may have some prejudiced beliefs around things that are impacting their choices every day. And if they are in a position of influence, if they are in a managerial or a supervisorial position or an executive You need to remember, and we've all experienced this because we've all been the kid on the playground or, you know, the teenager at the party, the the vast majority of individuals will default to the most dominant energy in the room, the most dominant energy, personality, whether it's just the most charismatic person or the biggest bully. Mm -hmm. So if you've got that level of influence, we have to remember we didn't leave it at the party. We didn't leave it in the classroom. We are now experiencing it as adults, having that same sway over others and being conscious of our leadership because of our prejudices, because our view on the world is going to have a ripple effect, uh, whether it's unconscious or not. So the tool that I use and some of the, um, the steps that we take in doing the coaching really ultimately brings each individual to a place where they're really lucid throughout the day. They go into their work environment, they recognize how much is the mood that I came from home with having an impact on how accessible I am to my people, how conscious and really emotionally intuitive I am 
to um, how they're feeling right now and whether or not I need to reach out, whether now is really the best time to make that phone call. Maybe I should hold off on this meeting because I'm not even in a good space to lead. We just have to be humble enough to be self-reflective and realize that without that, we're very often going to be doing harm or or certainly sabotaging opportunities to bring people together and influence them in the most productive and sustainable way for business. Well, people should rewind this one after they listen to it and listen to it over and over and over again because mo- sometimes I just take the position that people who work, people who work, period, but certainly if they're working in large corporations and they cluster in the same types of emotional groups that they had in high school have not gone much beyond that emotionally, high school. And we can provide them new labels to deal with and, and, and try to come through, but they need more, they need help. Yes. And I mean, that's the bottom line. They need help. The ones who don't know they need help, there's not much you can do. But the ones who have a niggle in their mind and go, you know, maybe there's something better than this, or I don't like the way I feel, um, they need to call somebody. And I'm sure they can call you, they can email you at Dr. Tatiana Irvin at gmail.com. That's Tatiana, T-A-T-I-A-N-A, Irvin, I-R-V-I-N, at gmail.com, and ask you a question. And I'm sure that they'll have some when they listen to this. But I also find that some people hear something, and it festers for a long time, and then it grows, and then it blossoms, and it might take a year or two. So who knows when they're going to come after you for help. (laughs) Well, we are all in our own divine timing, and if this is just one more um, you know, message that speaks to the conscience that says, yes, I know that I'm really not enjoying myself, I'm really not feeling as dynamic and passionate as I used to be, what's missing? It, it's time. It's time to examine it. When, If not now, when? When is it going to be the most appropriate time for you to be enjoying your life more fully? And if where you are right now in your profession is not really growing your next core competency and you're not satisfied with it, it's okay to examine that. You can choose to stay longer and there'll be more lessons or it might be time to embrace a whole other aspect of your growth and development that's going to be far more enriching and fulfilling. And I think you said uh, two words that are magic to me. Most people think, uh, what's wrong with me? You know, what do I need to do? What's wrong? What did I do wrong? Because that's just the way our world is. I I think you had it here in the not enough, the not enoughness issue. And I always say what's missing, as you just said as well. What's missing? Um, And that covers a lot. What's missing in my life? What's missing in the world? What's missing in my home life? What's missing at work rather than what's wrong? What's wrong is just more pain. (laughs) It can be. And and I think that's why when we examine the concept of uh, what is a sense of wholeness, and in my first book, you know, uh, developing prosperity through emotional intuition, what is prosperity to you? Let's consider that the, the not enoughness or the sense of what's wrong might just be that we're only slightly out of balance. And if we take a look at it, we're just one step away from our concept of wholeness and prosperity, which doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a multi six figure income and a Maserati. Our sense, our personal sense of prosperity and wholeness might actually mean it's time to leave corporate, no matter how brilliant a legacy you left behind, and get back to oil painting. I, I just left a client the other day who did that exact same thing right here in, you know, uh, RTP uh, and uh, RDU of uh, North, North Carolina. And, and it wasn't that he'd failed at anything. It's just that he'd ridden through a full season and realized there was other aspects of himself that were going to bring him closer to wholeness if he examined them. And it just happened to be painting. And I just purchased the painting from him. And nothing can be more fulfilling than knowing that you're impacting other people's lives in a new way. Well, that's what we're here to do. Absolutely. We're here to serve others in whatever form it takes, whatever steps we need to take within ourselves. We're also helping other people. I'm, I'm sure you're similar to me in that if, you, if you're not helping someone every day, it's, it's not a full day. Brilliant. Exactly. There's something missing in that moment and you realize uh, the exchange, that beautiful law of reciprocity where we actually can feel the difference by having touched another person and, and then it returns to us, doesn't it? It does, uh, and, and yet when I do it, it's I and I've probably I was doing it unconsciously for years. Just 
sometimes I thought I was nosy or whatever, and probably I am, but I'm always interrupting people's situations and saying, hmm, did you ever think about trying XYZ? And I never thought about a return on investment or an ROI on those kinds of things. But it was always, I just couldn't keep my nose out of other people's business. And when I got to a certain age, not when I was a teenager, that's for sure. Um, but it was always important to me to not see people suffer. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. I didn't like seeing people suffer. There's not much I can do about it on a grand scale. And we just go to ourselves and our, you know, our environment and take care of it that way. At least that's the way it worked for me. Mm-hmm. So w- what has been a lesson that has stuck with you through all your entire life that you can recall? Well, especially as it applies to your listeners, I really do respect that there was a driving passion and there was already, as I already stated, a core competency, a leaning towards that technical mind for them to be involved in what they're doing. And maybe it was even a drive for, you know, the achievable income that that this particular industry provides. And all of these are noble pursuits. Um, If we believe at any time that we can show up in the facet of our life that is our professional um, and, you know, our occupational um, arena and not bring all of us there. We're whole people. We're whole people. And we bring our health into that environment. We generally bring, bring some of our, you know, moral or religious or philosophical leanings. We certainly bring our familial influences. If we recognize that we're bringing our whole selves to that, to that environment, and we welcome others to bring their whole selves. You know, this is more of a European concept, and I think that the listener would do really well to look into how, uh, you know, businesses in Scandinavia and Italy and France actually treat employees and take family time and take vacation time. Uh, you know, we in the West have really, really, really held ourselves down to the grinder um, in not recognizing that we need to create wholeness and balance to maintain our health, our mental health, and our family family's health and relationships. With what goes on with divorces and what goes on with you know our medical care system, bringing your whole self into that environment and then recognizing that that influence is going to really support and enhance and encourage others around you to do the same. Um, as we do that, we're much more conscious and it has been proven consistently that we can be that much more satisfied therefore that much more productive. It just creates win, win, win wheels everywhere. So that's what I'm about. It's getting up every single day and saying, how can I bring my whole self to any situation and through that have the eyes of compassion and have everyone, you know, feeling that they had been, you know, impacted in a way that made them feel much more authentic with themselves and maybe much more in touch with their own wholeness in any given day. And I know your listeners can do that when they really start to bring that into their workplace where they spend the vast majority of their time. Absolutely. Well, you have a full background here, but I want to promote your book, The Reluctant Intuitive. Mm-hmm. Is that the full title or does it have a subtitle? It has a subtitle. It is a soulful confession and practical guide. And it's soulful because it really is a very buttoned-down memoir. I had a, a very stringent editing uh, platform. My editor, you know, was ruthless, and I'm grateful to them for their support. But it's also a practical guide because it gives tools for the listener, for the reader, to be able to awaken aspects of their own latent intuition. I speak from a place of one of many. We are all intuitive. It's hardwired into our DNA. It is part of that unused, untapped area of our brains. And that's why we all experience, you know, nuances and subtleties. And it's just time to start using them as a skill set. And I welcome the reader to do that. And I assist them through this book by sharing some intimate aspects and then giving some of the tools for them to enhance that for themselves. Well, I went to the reluctantintuitivebook.com website. And I will spell it again for our listeners. The, T-H-E, reluctant, R-E-L-U-C-T-A-N-T-I-N, intuitive i-n-t-u-i-t-i-v-e book.com oh spell it out people i'll have it in the show notes (laughs) anyway (laughs) it's like you got it (laughs) just go to the show notes or just go to her website dr tatiana irvin.com anyway if you go to the book site 
And you go order a book and you can get the hardback and you can get the paperback. But in today's age, you can get download the ebook probably to your Kindle for three ninety nine. I don't think you can do better than that because the hard book is twenty eight ninety five. You can get that too and put it on your shelf and refer to it or put it on your nightstand so that you always have something to look at when you get up in the morning. But you can get the ebook for three ninety nine. And you, it, it's that's free, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it, Joanne? It, you know. So, right. is there anything else you would like to share with our listeners? Well, yes, I actually would. I know there's going to be a follow-up book at some point, but one of the things that I, I think that too many of us miss when we are in a space of tasking ourselves towards greater productivity and impeccability and fitness and, you know, excellence. We push ourselves towards excellence, many of us, or we browbeat ourselves for not. Let's stop and remember something else. This one precious life that you have, whether you believe that it's a singular experience or that there's going to be a multiplicitous experience, whatever it may be, it's your one shot at being you. Really examine, are you enjoying it? Are you having a good time? Is there enough laughter going on? Whatever it is that we're putting our energy into, relationships and certainly our professional capacity, is it bringing you lasting joy? Do you feel good at the end of the day? And and what are you bringing to the table that's making everyone else's journey lighter? So part of what I'm coming from isn't necessarily lighten up, lighten up, but seek, seek really sustainable and permeable joy. Find places where everything that you do can come from a place of, you know, being genuine to uh, your sustainable happiness. And if it's not, it's time to stop and examine it. Well, that's it. (laughs) That's that's perfect. Again, listeners, rewind and listen to what Tatiana just said. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been a great show. I appreciate you being here. You gave a lot of solid, solid data. And I think this is going to resonate with our listeners. And who knows, they may be calling you and they may be signing up with you and they will hopefully buy your book either in the hardback, softbound or ebook for their Kindles and whatever else they have in their electronic libraries. Thank you very much for being here, Tatiana Irvin, and we will see you soon. Take care. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com and continue the conversation on her podcast page. And get a free copy of her book, The True Self Handbook, a guide to transform your life. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.